Tonight, more than 20 Democrats will take to the Senate floor and call on their fellow lawmakers to pass gun legislation. The speeches that are expected to go well into the night will not force or delay any votes. They are all solely for a call to action. This comes as we learn new details about the negotiations going on behind the scenes. White House and congressional staffers struggling to reach an agreement on a possible background check bill. So will this all be just another missed opportunity for the two sides to come together and get something done? Here to help answer that question, two congressmen who work on bipartisan issues every day as co-chairs of the Problem Solvers Caucus, Democratic Congressman from New Jersey, Josh Gottheimer, and Republican Congressman from New York, Tom Reed. I'm going to go to Tom first. You and I spoke last week. You weren't down with background checks. I'm going to guess Josh is. So what is <laughs> yes. it that you're working so hard on together? So I think there's some opportunities to maybe fix uh, some of the, the background check processes, getting the data correct. Uh, maybe there's some areas that we can do in regards to uh, making sure people uh, who are demonstrating psychopathic type of mental illness uh, characteristics, keep them from having access to a weapon, maybe we can move the needle there. It won't be a, a ban. It won't be any of that conversation. But that's where common ground, I think, can be made on this issue. Do you agree with that? It's people who have shown uh, psychopathic tendencies because there's a whole lot of situations where shooters out there aren't showing psychopathic tendencies and they're able to get guns, lots of them. I mean, I think red flags, and as we're talking about, are part of the solution here, but of course you need background checks. It starts with that, and I'm really hoping, and we've heard from the White House and the President, that he's interested in potentially moving forward on that, and the Senate, as you know, is waiting to see if he's interested. I'm hoping we get action. I'm really glad they're going to the floor tonight about this, and I'll tell you, we've been working at, we don't, for hours on this issue, trying to see if there's a place to find common ground. It's a tough issue, but I think it's, it's time. You agree that it's time? Many uh, Republicans are saying they're sort of waiting for the nod from President Trump. It was time years ago. I mean, uh, you go back to Caliban, you go back to Parkland. We should always be up? trying uh, politics. Uh, politics. Specifically. It's, it's uh, the divisiveness of the issue. I no, mean, no, no, and no. also, Not but Stephanie. Politics and emergency ring. It, what it is, is the a, specific is issue why nothing has gotten done? Yeah. Well, it's a difficult issue because if you come at this from a fundamental right, Second Amendment position like I do, and if you always have to talk about a banning an assault rifle, banning an object, that's not going to bring people together. And if we also adopt the language of gun safety and protecting uh, folks from the threats that are out there, that can bring that language brings people together as opposed to the division that, that comes. So when moms say to you and they use the language, I don't want anyone to have a semi-automatic weapon and be able to bring it into my kindergarten or school. What do you think about that language? So what I tell that mom is, uh, I agree with you. I don't want that individual who is committing such a horrific act that took their child. And I've been there, Stephanie. I've, ha I've held these individuals in my arms. I don't want that individual to have that weapon in order to commit that horrific act. So finding the individual is where the difficult conversation needs to be focused on. Have you held an AR-15 in your arms? I have. And you think it's something we should be able to get? I think it's a fundamental right. It's a constitutional freedom. It is a freedom in our Constitution. If you want to repeal the Second Amendment, then that is a process that is available under the Constitution. And obviously I have a different perspective on this, right? I don't think you need military-style assault rifles. And, but, I, but I do believe it's okay, to, and, and the, the ability to hunt is fine, the ability to protect yourself is fine. But the bottom line is I don't understand why we can't just do a simple background check and get to the bottom of this and make sure, and I think we agree on plenty of this on the red flags, and when someone, if you're a, a, a terrorist, a criminal, a gang member, if you have mental uh, health issues, we should make sure that we, we take the time and make sure we do those background checks. You guys are the head of the Problem Solvers Caucus. If you two can't agree on something that we can really get done, why should there be any hope? Because we are coming to an agreement. We came to an agreement on the last time, and that did get done. The fix the next bill, the school resource school officer safety. funding, yeah. that moved the, the ball. The, moving the ball is a victory. doesn't mean you're going to solve it exactly like everybody wants to have done in 100% agreement. This is a very and, difficult And that, that's really the point, Stephanie. You have to be willing to, you're not going to get everything you want, especially if you've got a divided government. But with last Congress, we did get action. Now the key is to get more. So we're going to keep working on it. The key is not to give up. And I guess that's, that's really the issue. If you're not going to get everything, Thing that you want, but you've got Democratic candidates like Better O'Rourke calling for a gun buyback program, calling for uh, an assault on a certain type of rifles. Does that hurt your effort to get something done? 
You're always get, that, that is not new. You're always going to have people on both sides, on Tom's side and the other side, right, making, right, wanting to make sure that we get everything. And I think that's, by the way, a good thing because it pushes us to work harder. And so are we going to get everything? No. But the bottom line is I think what you're hearing from Beto and others is that we've got to do something. And that's how what I feel is critically important, which is why we're going to keep talking and, until we get somewhere. And I don't think it's helpful to have that rhetoric out there because now all Democrats are labeled, they're going to come take your guns, they're going to take your guns away. And that's why that rhetoric is very, uh, um, we've got to be very sensitive to it. And that's why we talk to each other and listen to each other. And we can get there maybe with a, a move in the right way. You know what I know that you like? My bipartisan horn. You want me ringing this? I'll ring it all day. Hey. Every day. I want to hear get that. Something done. I, I know you want to hear I it. Do. You can help your fellow compatriots. I want to talk about this other issue you are focused on right now. You are writing a letter that is focused to Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, talking about the spread of extremism on their platforms. What's your goal with this yeah, letter? Kudos to, to Josh for taking the leadership on this issue of going after foreign tours terrorist organizations and rooting out that hateful speech that is out there. These are foreign terrorist organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas, and this is all over Twitter, Facebook, and they are allowed to have a, a pulpit that they should not obviously have a pulpit to. Don't to forget cry. domestic terrorists who are finding one another using these platforms. Yes, and what, help, and what, help me understand this specific letter. What do you think you're going to get done? So you've got 68 foreign terrorist organizations as, as designated by the State Department, right? We know Hamas, Hezbollah, and others. Hamas literally has a handle on Twitter, right, you can follow. This weekend, Hezbollah posted a new, uh, a new missile, right, to go after people in the Middle East and, and to go after uh, ships and to, and to our, of course, our defense capabilities in the Middle East. And here they go. We have to, what we're saying to these companies is take action, get the foreign terrorist organizations off your platforms. There's no reason Hezbollah and Hamas should have a handle with 700,000 followers, right? It's all it does is, of course, incite terror and threats to the United States of America. Google, Facebook, YouTube, they're coming for you. Good luck with the letter. Good luck with tonight. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.